I guess you don't know where I grew up. <laughs> it wasn't the best neighborhood. Right in front of my house, in the ditch, somebody stabbed another guy on the throat. So it wasn't easy growing up in that kind of neighborhood. Yeah, no, I needed St. Jude. But unfortunately, I didn't learn about St. Jude until I was in high school and I joined the High Easy Girls Club because that was their saint. And I thought, oh, the saint is for the impossible. I need him. And we've been together ever since. Why does that make you emotional? Well, when we were growing up, we always had to go to church. So I was, pr I was pretty close to the church. I would even go to confession just walking with the priest. But I got out of the church when I had you because they didn't want to baptize you. But I never gave up on St. Jude. I think that's when St. Jude helped me the most because St. Jude was always there, no matter what I did or what I didn't do. He was, he was always there. Everybody always gives me a St. Jude because I'm always pushing St. Jude on. You know, since I'm a single mom, I've always had several kinds of jobs. I have my permanent job and then I do other little things. Whatever job I'm doing, I always have St. Jude and I pass out St. Jude. Use this, pray it, and then it says that, he, you know, he's for the impossible. Not that we don't pray to Jesus or Mary or anybody else, but through his intercession, he can go to Jesus and he can go to Mary and say, hey, in this life, we all have struggles. So if anybody out there is really struggling with either drugs or with, you know, being a single mom, I know that's hard because I've lived through it and I've been through it. You've got cancer, you've got any kind of problem, things that are impossible or we think they're impossible. They might not be as impossible as we think. I encourage you to go and pray to St. Jude. Ask St. Jude for help. Without St. Jude, I wouldn't be where I'm at. And I don't think Gabi would be where he is at. St. Jude is the patron saint of hopeless cases and things most despaired of. And I feel statistically that I was a hopeless case and something to be despaired of. Although my mom did an amazing job, she did as good a job as a single mother could do. Not having a father left a deep wound in my soul that I'll probably experience for the rest of my life. And with that comes lower income in families being left home alone a lot. I was a latchkey child, and so I was watching a lot of television, especially cable television. So my morals and my worldview was shaped essentially by MTV. I went to a public school where I was taught secular things in secular ways. So I had a lot against me. I had no religious background. I had no religious education. I didn't know any prayers. I didn't know the Our Father. I didn't know the Hail Mary. But I did know one thing. Most Holy Apostle St. Jude, faithful servant and friend of Jesus, the church honors and invokes, invokes you universally as a patron of hopeless cases and things most despaired of. When I would pray to St. Jude and he would answer me, I knew because of the words that I was saying, I was saying faithful servant and friend of Jesus. So I knew that although St. Jude was powerful in answering my prayers, that he was a servant of this person named Jesus and then the church honors and invokes you universally as a patron of hopeless cases. So I knew that although I was getting prayers answered by this individual, there was a much larger structure, a much larger organization that was bringing power into my life. And I honestly credit my being affiliated even distantly to the Catholic Church and to Jesus Christ to St. Jude. When I was starting to convert, I would go in the middle of the night to adoration. I would make a holy hour at St. Vincent de Paul Catholic Church. And next to Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament was a huge statue of St. Jude. And I never understood why. I just thought that St. Jude was just like the most famous of all the apostles. Only later did I realize that there's an odd 
attention given to St. Jude amongst all the other apostles. So St. Jude was one of the 12 apostles. That means he spent his time with Jesus Christ, at least three years of his public ministry. He saw Jesus work miracles. He was an intimate friend of his, and he ended up giving his life for Jesus Christ. He also wrote a letter in the New Testament. In the letter, it's very relevant for today because he tells to watch out for those who teach false teachings. He encourages the faithful to be strong in their faith, to persevere in their faith. But St. Jude wasn't a remarkable apostle. No offense to him. Remarkable apostles, in my opinion, are like St. Peter, the rock. He's mentioned over a hundred times in the New Testament. He's the leader of all of the other apostles. It's Peter and the other apostles. But for some reason, when I go to the grocery store, I don't see any candles of St. Peter. St. John is another standout, amazing apostle. They're all great, of course, but St. John was Jesus' beloved disciple. St. John was entrusted with the Virgin Mary. St. John wrote one of the most theologically elevated gospel reflections. And yet, I don't see tons of statues of John the Apostle at all these random Catholic churches. So there is a devotion to St. Jude that is extraordinary compared to all the other apostles. Partially, I think that it's because he's an apostle to the hopeless. And if there's going to be an apostle that the Holy Spirit picks to reach out to people, it's going to be the person who can reach out to the most common denominator. You're the patron of the hopeless. Everybody needs help. Catholic, non-Catholic, we are all struggling. We all reach low moments in our life. One thing that I like and one of the reasons why I think St. Jude brought me to the church and to Jesus Christ is because everything about him is Christocentric. You cannot look at an image of St. Jude without seeing the face of Jesus Christ. In his iconography, not just in his prayer, but in his iconography, he pushes people towards Jesus Christ and to the Catholic Church. St. Jude is often depicted with a large medallion or with a sheet that has the face of Jesus Christ on it. And he's the only apostle who's depicted this way. Also, he's depicted often with a club, sometimes an ax, because he was martyred. The history of St. Jude is a little bit unclear. There's a lot of various stories that you can look up concerning why he has this iconography. What matters most is that he was willing to die for his faith. And we often think, oh, would I be willing to die for this idea? But it, it, to St. Jude, Jesus Christ was not an idea. For St. Jude, Jesus Christ was somebody that he knew personally. Was he willing to die for an experience? Was he gonna deny having walked and spent time with the Savior of the world for three years? In his iconography, not only does he have often a club, but he also has the Holy Spirit in the shape of a tongue above his head. This points us to the sacrament of confirmation. So St. Jude at Pentecost received the fullness of the Holy Spirit, that same Holy Spirit that we receive in the sacrament of confirmation. So everything about St. Jude points people to Jesus Christ. What can we learn from St. Jude? Why is he relevant today? First and foremost, we're all called to be apostles of Jesus Christ. And he can teach us if we want to be effective, we have to reach out to the hopeless. So many of our family and friends are in need of encouragement and God is calling us to be his hands and his feet and his voice and to reach out to them. But not just to reach out to them with regular contributions, but to reach out to them as a disciple of Jesus Christ. St. Jude wears a sacramental around his neck. We can learn from him that one way to mark ourselves visibly as a disciple of Jesus Christ is to wear a symbol of our faith. Wear a holy face, wear a crucifix, wear a miraculous medal, wear some symbol so that when you're doing your act of charity, when you're reaching out in love, people will know that this is a person who represents Jesus Christ. This is a person who represents the Catholic Church. If you're watching this and you've received the sacrament of confirmation. You have the same Holy Spirit that the apostles received at Pentecost. You have the same fire of God living in you. What we need to do is pray to the Holy Spirit more often. Pray that we can be God's instrument. Jesus left us so that he could leave us with the Holy Spirit. We have to call upon the Holy Spirit and act confidently. 
We have to pray that we have the grace on a daily basis to sacrifice our wills for the will of Jesus Christ and God willing it doesn't come to it to be even willing to shed our blood for him. It's only fitting that we conclude this video by praying that same prayer that I used to pray as a child and that I still pray today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Most Holy Apostle Saint Jude, faithful servant and friend of Jesus, the Church honors and invokes you universally as the patron of hopeless cases and of things most despaired of. Pray for me, I am so helpless and alone. Make use, I implore you, of that particular privilege given to you to bring visible and speedy help where help is almost despaired of. Come to my assistance in this great need that I may receive the consolation and help of heaven in all my necessities, tribulations, and sufferings, particularly, here make your request, and that I may praise God with you and all the elect forever. I promise, O blessed Saint Jude, to be ever mindful of this great favor to always honor you as my special and powerful patron, and to gratefully encourage devotion to you. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for watching this video. If St. Jude has played a special role in your life, I would love to hear about that in the comment section below. If you'll notice that prayer at the end that we just did, it said, I will gratefully encourage devotion to you. If you have a devotion to St. Jude, you can encourage devotion to him by sharing this video. And if you enjoyed it, and if you've watched these videos and you have not yet subscribed, you can help me out by doing that. God bless you, God love you, and we will see you very soon.